But for game one, they are going to be starting off on Battlefield. Um, stage, really neutral stage choice. Um, you almost see these two go to Battlefield for the game one. Um, really nice parry punish for Mr. Weedo. Normally that falling forward, it would be relatively safe. Um, but of course not for parry it. And right now this is where the ledge trapping begins. Jen trying to cover the jump by jumping onto the platform with Mr. E. Um, you know, so smart to drift backwards. Huh, I would, I would have anticipated that the auto radical had a little bit more end line than that. But Jen just able to roll back on. Unable to get the down throw back here. Mr. E dodged, um, air dodge in time. And again, Mr. E has such a good handle on the timing of um, Jen's falling aerials from the platforms. Because parries aren't as much as a reaction as they are the lead, and if you are timing your aerials from the platform the same exact way every single time, you will be parried and punished for them. Um, wow, I'm really surprised about that angle of the down tilt, just sending them all the way to the other platform. Gonna be trying to find a two frame with the down tilt, of course, it not being particularly active and not going to connect. Going back to center stage and Mr. E was ready to punish that with an up tilt though, unfortunately his spacing was ever so slightly off. Jen losing his first talk to an F tilt. And right there, like, you need, like, as much as you, like, would hate to be over committing to something, going for something like a dash grab, especially when you still have the invulnerability, is so, so important just to reassert stage control. And like, honestly, if you get hit with neutral by Palutena, it's gonna be, at low percent, it's like a given 34-40%. Like, you're just gonna have to hold it at that point. Um, ooh, I think Mr. E, that was either a shield poke, or Mr. E preemptively dropped his shield. Right now, Jen has all the stage control that he wants, a really good back here to stuff out Mr. E. And it's so smart not to just challenge Lucina while she's recovering from blow. Because honestly, that hitbox is massive, and the probability of you getting gimped is, you know, you know, it's out there. Almost getting the down tilt, but um, Mr. E timing his jump, but unable to actually punish Palutena, because when Palu does down tilt, she low profiles, so she ducks under the forwarder. That is going to be the falling back end. Oh my god, Mr. E was right there. He had the right idea. But once again, like, he's not properly executing on, um, you know, Jen's more aggressive recoveries back onto the middle of the stage. That's gonna be a four, uh, neutral. I love that. That is such a good mix up because the entire game so far, you just see Mr. E slowly drift back, trying to, you know, like, recover from low. And when you stock up, you know, Lucina's off stage. She's still at in the middle. She's not fast falling quite yet. There is no reason for you not to challenge that. No reason at all. But yeah, for game two, they're going to be going to Pokemon Stadium two, and on this kind of a stage, I mean, again, it could go either way. Both of these characters benefit so much from the platforms, the platform extensions, and the spaciousness of it. But. Jen able to land two falling forwarders, not converting into a grab or dash attack surprisingly. Maybe he was anticipating a panicky defensive option, and thus he wanted to wait it out and capitalize on it. But regardless, he now has to find a way to get back onto stage against Mr. E. Now Lucina, having such a thin character model, actually not being like hit with that neutral air as Jen crossed him up. Ooh, trying to get the ledge trump back here, which might have actually taken the stock, not sure. Um, oh, Mr. E missing the tech chase. He set it up. Jen even missed the tech, too. And he teched, like, he, he did a tech roll inwards. So, not much else to say there. Mr. E just has to make sure he's, like, present enough. I love that. Such a good mix-up. Because either you're going to be landing with, like, a a back air, or it's gonna be like a tomahawk grab. It's gonna be a 50-50 situation. Um, and so Jen did like a good job of conditioning this to eat the previous game. Um, that, that he would always land with a back air. <gasps> Trying to take the stock with the falling neutral air, and he almost got game for it. He came back safe and sound though. 
Right now, he's looking for the back throw. He's looking for just about anything. Perhaps a drag down neutral into up tilt, which you see Jen like make more and more common use of as well. Dash attack, not quite enough to take it either. Trying to get the gimp with the auto radical, but Mr. E's so smart to drift in towards the stage. Because if you don't do that, you'll be beating a premature death. Mr. E ready to punish that, put himself in a perfect position for the pivot cancel F tilt. And it's just always like so important to be ready to have like that level of reaction in mix. But Jen finally taking the first stock with a back air. And honestly, Mr. E is not all that far off percentage wise. If you consider like halfway, you'll get halfway there with one low percent combo from Palutena. So, so smart for Jen to tech out. Like a habit a lot of people have is to tech inwards and towards the stage because, you know, you really want to have stage control. But especially a character with like Lucina, she does not have the ground speed to run up and punish your tech roll outwards. Great up behind the shield, um, punishing Jen's overcommitment. Right okay, now, Jen is just struggling to land or get something started, but right now they're both playing neutral. But you also have to consider that, like, Jen has no. Jen cannot trade, because he'll die. And right there, he was pushed to the edge of the stage. Died to a falling forward. This is a very convincing lead for Mr. E. Oh my god. And just as I say that, Jen is bringing it back, but Mr. E, not enough time to drift back towards the edge of the stage. So smart of air to drift backwards to avoid the back air. I love these jumps because he's just like trying to wait for an option for Mr. E, but Jen unfortunately drifting in, and thus Mr. E was ready for an up tilt to punish the second jump. Looking for that back air, but not able to find it quite. Really great parry punish. So good. I'm surprised that he had enough time to run off and land a back air from one up tilt parry. That move is relatively quick. And that is going to be the back throw. Not quite yet. Mr. E making the most use of his direction. Air dodge just to gain a little bit of drift. Beautiful. Such a good punish. And he was able to low profile under Lucina. Um, because of the up tilt animation. But this is such a precarious situation. Mr. E not committing to any two frames because he was waiting to see if Jen was going to recover back to the middle of the stage. Catching, stuffing out his landing with an up air. Um, I won. It's really difficult to say where, like, what Jen could be doing better, what Mr. E could be doing better. Because honestly, both of these players are playing so patiently. It's just. Especially when they're in the CQC situations. Jen might need to change up the way that he mixes between back air and tomahawk grab. Because Mr. Lee has really started to punish that with up tilts, with up bees out of shield. And so, you know, some sort of like mix is really going to be needed here. Anyhow, we're going to get back to Battlefield, a really smart choice just because, you know, Jen won uh, this game one here. But Mr. E taking a dominant 50% lead already right off the bat. He did not intend to bounce on Battlefield like that. This is so good for Mr. E right now. And did he jump first out of shield and then hit him with an upbeat? Oh, and he falls out of Jen's neutral air. Jen just, he's waiting for an overcommitment. I love those empty hops from a little bit past mid-range um, because he is just waiting for Mr. E to press in a little bit too much. Man, Jen has to be a little bit more careful uh, where he's initiating that update because you know, it, has, it has a decent amount of startup for it. Both of them just like dancing around each other, playing footsies. That's going to be the down throw, but Jan perfectly timing his tech, making sure he's not going to hit it with the back air. And he did not have enough trip to get the falling forward into dash attack, trying. Man, Mr. E is relentless. He's just not letting Jen get back onto stage. He's doing a phenomenal job of just keeping him out. Oh, he almost had it too, but again, Lucina lacks the ground speed. Did he armor through that down air? Or did it just not come out quite yet? Regardless, Mr. E coming back. That's gonna be the fun. Oh, so smart to use the dash attack there. Because um, 
you know, the shield has a little bit of invulnerability to it. Always well, intangibility. I always get the two mixed up. Ah. Chan unfortunately misspacing himself. Normally that would be the pivot grab, though. He was in a perfect position to do it as well. I'm not entirely sure about that intention of, of the dash, and perhaps he misinputted the ledge trump. And you see Jen getting a little bit desperate to take the kill with the up smash out of shield, but Lucina has the frame data to just safely press buttons up out of shield. You can't get away with stuff like that. I love that we grab through Mr. Lee, just because it really mixed up uh, Jen's timing, it mixed up his rhythm. Jen a little bit too hasty getting back onto stage. He might want to consider a high recovery with teleport, but Jen deciding to just SD and end it. Knowing that he might I don't even think he had his jump there. Really, really amazing play for Mr. E. So patient, so calculated. And honestly, I feel like that entire game was over as soon as Mr. E took that lead from the beginning. Oh, this is the ghost of um Boys Too Much. Really unfortunate. Um but it's like, you know, what can you do? Mr. Lee had one really good advantage state in the first stock, and then Jen just loses it to a really good, um, like, edge guard.